Creative Continuity, we bring the convention to you. Creative Continuity at the Great Philadelphia Comic Con. With Kerrigan Mayhem. We got you started in the wonderful world of acting. Third grade, I played the general store proprietor in a Old West thing, and I re realized in the third grade, this is what I want to do. And so, junior high, went from junior drama to senior drama, play production, and played Scrooge. Got five standing ovations, and I realized this is it. This is what I'm going to do. Awesome. And I never turned back from uh, junior high school all the way into college. I didn't last long with the college scene, and then I started doing um, uh, plays. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to New York. I studied, studied in L.A., studied in New York, and, and uh, did about... Oh, I don't know. A couple small roles in movies, uh, some on-camera and TV shows, and then I kind of stepped into this voiceover thing by complete fluke, um, and I never turned back. From age 28, I've never had a regular job. There was a group of us that did anime, mm -hmm. like it goes back to the days of Robotech. All right, wow. And Tony Oliver, who played the lead in Robotech, Rick Hunter. We all did a lot of stuff over the years from mm -hmm. the mid '80s, so you know. Saban wasn't even in the picture. Right. We were doing all our work through other uh, other anime houses. And uh, then Saban was kind of discovered in about 90, I think. He came over and, and he'd, made his, uh, he'd made his thing with music. And uh, we did a lot of work for, uh, for Hyam. Many, many anime cartoons before Power Rangers. So... Tony actually wound up on the producing end of things by the time Power Rangers came about, and um, <clears throat> the Power Rangers themselves all auditioned, of course. But our little troupe of actors, Tony literally uh, assigned these roles to us, and we didn't think Goldar was going to be be much of anything. Um, and then, uh, you know, episode 17 hit, and he said, "You better get uh, get that voice straightened out because you're a big, huge character." You did VR Troopers, correct? Yeah. Now that was out right around the time of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I think we were doing them simultaneous. I oh, think. Okay. I, okay. Uh, I, I I think VR came in about '95. Okay. And I was still doing Goldar. I would record Goldar. Well, sometimes I would record Goldar, and we'd go right into VR Troopers. Wow. I'd finish up whatever I had to do with Goldar, and if I was doing a VR Troopers. We would certainly do the VR Troopers first because there was no strain whatsoever with that voice. I mean, I just basically plugged Jack Nicholson into into the dog. The war, neither side is innocent. You're still a traitor, you worthless piece. We were children asked to fight an intergalactic war against an enemy we'd never met. Let's stop pretending our side stood on some moral high ground. I guess my overall take on it is kind of like, um, what are y'all doing? You don't own this. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to do with Saban or, I mean, it seems kind of like a nice uh, lesson in futility. That's kind of my take on it. I just mm. don't get it. I didn't get it. Right, right. You know? I, I don't know what the controversy was. I think it was taken down because they didn't own it. Right. You know? It was unsanctioned. You've got to own the licensing to do that. Right. I mean, the fact that we get to come here and sign autographs and do the voice and everything, I think, you know, the Saban camp kind of, we got no problem with that because it furthers, it just furthers the popular, you know, the, right. po the popular aspects to the Power Rangers. So, but that thing apparently did not. Um, I hear the new movie is going to be a little darker, and I hear that Goldar is a huge lead in it. That's what I'm hearing. I don't know what I'll have to do with it. I don't know. Hal Gant, signing off with Kerrigan Mayhem. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Pleasure. All right. All right, Hal Gant here. Great continuity. Great Philadelphia Comic Con with Walter Jones. It's me. Black Ranger. Did you do your own stunts? I did do a number of my own stunts. I mean, like, anytime you saw us fighting, we fought the putties and the bullies and occasionally, you know, the monsters in their, in their, um, in their small form. But mm -hmm. once they escalated to, like, 
super large size. Then we had to go to Rangers, and then we had to go to Megazord, and then we had to, you right, know, right, right. the whole thing. And you know, so in the beginning, it was always us. First 15 minutes of every show was us as teenagers, and then eventually we went on to be our our suited characters. And then at that point, it was usually unless it was transitional, uh, the Japanese footage for the first season. Anyway. Right, right. Did you take a martial arts discipline? Oh yeah, yeah. I was I studied Ishinru as a kid. I was a uh, mm -hmm. Pee Wee Michigan State champion. So, oh, wow. you know, I studied martial arts and, and, and you know, excelled and won like karate tournaments and kata tournaments and that kind of thing. Um, and the training stuck with me because I had done it for a number of years. Uh, and when actually, when I came to Power Rangers, that was the only training I had, but it was still in my memory. You know, it was still, you know, I had muscle memory. So right. I hadn't trained for a while, but what I knew or what I learned was good enough for me to get the show and then once I got on the show then I was working with a bunch of different martial artists and you know our, our stunt coordinators and everybody was really talented and I just improved me uh, as a martial artist because okay. the other guys that are around me the new things they do something and I go oh show me that or I pick it up I see it and I would do it and it just um, I ended up having this um, variety of, of skills from different martial art forms after the Rangers, mm -hmm. I went on and, uh, and got a black belt in Hapkido. Wow, wow, yeah. wow, wow. Now, in terms of your dancing, that was just a God-given talent. No, no, I mean, I, 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 it's something I've done throughout my life. I mean, I was inspired by Michael Jackson and, and various other dancers. And, um, you know, I started pop-locking, you know, in high school. Uh, okay, kind of he thing. still got it. He so still I was, got it. I was doing that, you know. <laughs> watch out. And, uh, and then I went to a school of performing arts. I studied jazz, tap, ballet, wow, wow, modern. Wow, wow. You know, I, I, I learned the basics of dance, mm -hmm. which just gave me even more power and strength to, to walk out and be able to see something and go, okay, I understand what that pattern is. I know how the weight shifts and, and understand the complexities of, of breaking down stuff. Same thing with martial arts. Martial arts is like a dance, you know? It's a, a series of combination moves that you put together and you do it with a certain flow and weight change and, um, and you can make it effective. Have you seen it? It was a fan film, yes, it I saw it. And film. it was, it was, uh, it was kind of rated off. They were like, okay, we're gonna take this and in our, in our imaginations, if uh, Rangers who had the, had to fight, you know, as child, children, and, uh, and you know, battle these monsters, they have like some kind of PTSD and, and it might flip them around and make them completely different. So this is from their mindset and they just went far right with it as they could. Like, yes, you know, they, they just took it like really dark right, and gritty. Yeah. And yeah. I gotta say that it was well done. It was well budgeted, the acting was good. You know, the action was cool. It just wasn't really right for our fan base. Meaning, you know, and I don't think it, it was meant to be. It was meant to be this experiment right. you know, of what would it be like if we took this and took it over there? I mean, as an action genre um, show, it only makes sense that somebody would think, oh, that would be cool to take it really dark. But, you know, again, it, we have a lot of kids that we are, uh, we cater to and then we are role models for. So we don't necessarily want that to be out there for them. But then we have a lot of adult fans who look at that and go, man, that sounds gritty. I, I wouldn't want to watch that. You know, like, that's my, you know, that's my, like, nighttime, you know, late night. Yeah. You know, that'd be my late night activity. Um, but, yeah, I, like I said, I thought it was well done. Just not really right for the majority of our fan base. Right. Anything else we can look forward to seeing you in? Any big projects or anything? Any type of Rangers reunion of some <laughs> kind? Well, I mean, there's there's lots of possibilities. I mean, um, you know, obviously the Lionsgate film is coming up. We're hoping we get a, a cameo in that of some they sort. Should. We have yet to hear anything about it. But right. um, and there's a few other things that we got going on. I know... Um, couple of different films that are out there that uh, we intend to be working on sometime soon. Uh, I do a lot of looping, uh, which is voiceover and post-production. So right okay. now, the films that I've worked on that are out currently are Get Hard, Insurgent, and uh, Running Out of Time. And I just did another one called Trumbo last week, which is about um, a writer who um, takes place in 1947s. He was on the blacklist hmm. and actually ended up winning some Academy Awards. With, through a different name, through an alias. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. that's awesome, that's awesome. Yeah, that's so good I mean, to know. I do a number of things, man, and I'm also uh, working on promoting a boxer, Cornelius, Cornelius Bundridge, K9 Bundridge. He's a, a yeah, fighter, yeah, yo, he's my yeah, boy he from was Detroit. On, uh, he was on a reality he show. He was on, uh, yeah, he was I on like a reality K9 show. I like K9 a lot, I know yeah, exactly who K9. you're talking so about. So 
Uh, I'm with an organization we promote his fights. This is Harold Gant, Walter Jones. That's me. Signing out. Signing out. Peace. With Kerrigan Mohan. Mayhem. Mayhem. All right. <laughs> what's with, what's with, what's with the Mohan? I don't know. I don't know. Mayhem, I like to like that better too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like mayhem and you got yeah, mayhem. Mayhem's mayhem. Yeah. <laughs> we rolling? All right, Harold Gann here with Walter Jones. Black Ranger, son. That's right, what's up, oh. man? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's important that I don't mess that up because this is going to God knows where and I don't want Tony to go, you don't remember my character, are you kidding me? So anyway, we all did a lot of stuff over the years. Walter is doing it. You know, Canines doing, that do things, yes. Shout out to Canine. Coordinate, yes. What's up, Canine? Uh, <laughs> that's right. Mr. Bundridge. Yes, sir. Your voice for Goldar is iconic. It, it's, you can't have a Goldar. Iconic. That's right. With no Kerrigan, no Goldar. That's, I kind of like your attitude. There we go. Let me get Saban on the phone real quick. Yeah, I'll call. Tell him how that works. We'll two-way him. <laughs>